best place to try to receive something like this. But you can do, the, I mean, the same thing. And that's, that's running, again, that's running off the Raspberry Pi and sending the data back through the Ethernet connection. <laughs> Air Force, you know, there are some, it's interesting what you see up there because there are some planes that don't even send their tail numbers. Oh. And almost all the planes that are up there that are sending data do send their tail numbers. And you always wonder, you know, is that a black helicopter or, <laughs> or what is that thing in the sky <laughs> that's not even sending their tail numbers? Because I think that's, I think it's required for them to all send their, their tail numbers. I think. about drugs? <laughs> Did you yeah, have that right? yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, the tail number would be a registered aircraft. Right. Right. Yeah. Even, even military? Oh, military aircraft are registered. So. Yeah. I wonder if they would have to be required to send them. Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Because it might be military. Yeah. Is that part of the IFF, or Identification Friend or Foe? Is that what broadcasts the... No, um, it's, it's probably yeah, probably similar. This, like I said, this is what they call ADSB. Sounds like you know. Can't say. At least when I was involved, that ID was in the data stream. Okay. Um, just a quick comment here. Huh? Um, Maybe a bunch of you already know this, but there's a website called websdr.org. It's a link to a gazillion different sites that are typically ham radio sites, and they have SDR radio set up, and they're typically <coughs> using soft, soft rock, right. soft, soft rock. rock. You, you can pick the band. Now, they'll give you a section of the band to work with. You pick the band you want, and then you dial up the frequency you want. You can play with the filters and all this sort of stuff. And there can be literally any number of, of users on any of the radios at any given time. And this is really convenient if you want to listen to your own signal to see how well you're getting out or whatever. And there's, there's a real nice one down there in uh, Atlanta. Uh, W4AX, I think it is. You can go there and he has a receiver on every band. And uh, you can, if you want to see how you sound at 20 meters down there, you just dial up the frequency and start talking and you hear yourself down in the band. So it, it's really a slick deal. And you can fiddle with the filters and you can do all sorts of things. Really. It's not as complex as what's being demonstrated here, but it's a, it's a nice uh, utility uh, site. So I have a question right. for you. Sure. Is there any other software to do scanning? Can you set up predefined channels and then... You can. Um, there is a scanning plugin for the SDR Sharp. It will actually look for the peaks and it'll scan through whatever frequency range you give it. It'll find each peak and it'll stop just like regular scanner would. Okay. Um, another thing I forgot to mention, the, uh, the Zadig driver is, is port specific. So if you plug in your USB stick and load the driver, and you then unplug the stick and plug it into a different port, it's not going to work. The driver is port specific, so you have to make sure you're in the same port. But that actually is a benefit because people are actually taking multiple sticks, plugging them into multiple ports. Now, like for, like for instance, the aircraft thing, there's one guy that, I think it's a YouTube video somewhere, he has three sticks plugged in. One stick, he's watching the ADSB stuff, he's watching the planes. Another stick, he has SDR Sharp listening to the traffic, the actual radio traffic of the planes. And the third stick, he's listening to the other data stream. There's another data stream also that they sent. So he's also monitoring that at the same time with three sticks. And there are also plugins for SDR Sharp that will allow you to do trunking. If you have two sticks, one stick you can set up to actually configure it to listen to the control frequency for the trunking, and then it will automatically, the software will listen to the control frequency and it will switch to the correct frequency with the other stick so you can listen to the, the frequency with the other stick. So you can actually do a trunking, a full trunking radio with just two dongles and some software. 
guys. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of those kind of cool things, too. Uh, real quick, I'm going to try, let me just, I'm going to switch on that. I, like I said, I don't think we're going to get any HF in here, but we'll try it. Frequency is actually 100 megahertz lower than what I'm receiving. So then you can actually go to the actual true frequency on the UI and see the actual frequency instead of having to work it out in your head. You know, not that it's that hard to add 100 megahertz to anything. <laughs> especially with your HF. Yeah, especially with your HF. So, so there's. Yes. There's uh, two handouts left if somebody hasn't gotten 